the love hex. Fade in, exterior Meadowbrook Polo Club, Clubhouse Patio, day. Rose Hayes, 34, slim with dark brown hair, takes a sip from a cocktail. She's kept herself well, but always has a somewhat sad expression on her face. On the table in front of her sit a small notebook and a fountain pen. She turns and speaks to someone at a nearby table whom we do not see. Super, Long Island, New York, 1929. I used to enjoy going to the movies, to the theater, but Spencer doesn't take me out anymore. Then I don't feel like it anyways. The doctors say I shouldn't have arthritis at my age, but I do. Maybe it's just from my body's lack of use. She takes another sip, watches the horses and players gallop across the field, then resumes speaking. They also could never quite figure out why I couldn't bear children, or whether it was Spencer who could not father them. Eventually, we just stopped trying. We now see that she's addressing a seven-year-old boy and his nine-year-old sister who are eating ice cream beside her. They're among a few other observers on the clubhouse patio overlooking a polo field at this posh country club. I can't even remember the last time Spencer rolled over onto my side of the bed, but no doubt he's fulfilling his needs with someone. Does that bother me? Mm, not really. <laughs> Better her than me pretending to enjoy his clumsy efforts at lovemaking. Excuse me? Rose turns and sees the kid's mother, a few years younger than Rose, standing behind her glaring. Oh, hello. Are they yours? So precious. The woman grabs her kids by their arms and drags them away. Rose shrugs and takes another sip of her cocktail. She tilts her head, thinks for a bit, then jots in her notebook. On the field, the polo match has ended and the teams are dispersing. Rose's husband, Spencer Hayes, mid-fifties, slim, gray hair, on horseback, trots over to where Rose is seated. She looks up, watches him approach, and fakes a smile. My clients have invited me for a few drinks, so I'll be staying a little longer. But my appointment with Dr. Cohen. Oh yes, that. Then take a taxi and I'll see you at home for dinner. Rose nods and he trots away. Dissolve to. Exterior. Tehuacan, Mexico. Day. Super. Tehuacan, Mexico. Shots of the people, streets, dirt roads, parks, plazas, markets, churches, schools, businesses, homes, hot spring spas, and small farms outside of town. Our mama always says, God put all of us in a place for a reason. Someday, I'm sure he will tell me mine. Exterior Plaza Day. Ramiro's point of view on a middle-aged gringo tipping his hat and smiling as they pass one another. The walking point of view pauses to watch a gringo man take a picture of his gringo wife next to a street vendor. Yes, little Diego. You can see it's tourist season. They come to soak in the hot springs, especially the women. Their gringo doctors say that the waters are virtuous, that they can cure diseases because they contain salt and sulfur. The walking point of view resumes, occasionally nodding hello at the faces he encounters. I would never get into those pools with the gringos. To me, that is the same as washing myself with the contents of someone's chamber pot. Reveal Ramiro Tellez, 22, slim and sporting a mustache that makes him look a little like an expatriate Parisian artist. There's a small arf reveal he's been talking to a sizable black dog, Diego, with a stripe across its face. As they near the edge of the plaza, Ramiro stops to watch a street artist painting a white stripe across the face of the Aztec god Tezcatlipoca on a canvas. Ah, the god, Tezcatlipoca, right? He is a naughty one. The painter laughs. Yes, and that's why he's my favorite, Ramiro. They both notice Diego looking at the painting with his head cocked sideways, curious. You have a good life, Diego. People feed you just because you have his same stripe across your face. Yes, you are lucky that people are so superstitious here, or else you would starve. 